Hi, Tiana. Hi, Tatiana. Good. <laughs> Good. How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, congratulations Good. on the success of Scream 2022. <laughs> the new beginning, whatever we want five, to call five it. Cream. Five cream. Five cream. Five, <laughs> five cream, yeah. <laughs> Thank um, you. So uh, I know that I'm not supposed to ask spoilers. So if there's a question that I ask and you're like, I don't want to answer that. Just say spoilers and then we'll just move on. But <laughs> We've gotten real good at talking around inside of the spoiler. <laughs> love it, love it. Uh, so just first off, obviously this is the first Scream film without the legendary Wes Craven. Um, and also the first one that is like written and directed by not the original team, which is a huge undertaking for anyone. Why was Radio Silence so willing to take it on and so right to take it on? I don't think we can tell you why we were right to take it, <laughs> <laughs> but I can tell you why we were willing because we mm -hmm. love it and we love Scream. You know, we grew up with Scream. It's been a part of our life for 25 years, and it it it's it's been such an influence on us that I mean, we use Scream as one of the movies that we referenced when we set up our previous movie, Ready or Not. It was Scream was one of the three movies we used to kind of sell it up the river, you know, mm -hmm. and so it's just kind of it's in who it's in us who and who we are because of our love for it. So to be given the opportunity, uh, we were very nervous because we didn't want to mess it up, but guy and Jamie wrote a great script. So, you know, once we read that script, we were like, Oh, this is, this is going to be a good movie. Like if, if we don't mess it up, but you know, <laughs> it, it, it did, it did really, it was a very serendipitous kind of the way it came together where usually we have to go, pitch on things and do like lookbooks and make up all these, these blah, 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 all this stuff. But in this instance, we had just made ready or not with a lot of the same people. And so the, uh, the producers, Jamie, uh, Paul and William wanted to kind of replicate that because we had such a good time together. So we jumped in and I mean, it was, it, Here was, we are. A, it was a delightful experience. <laughs> I love, I love this little guy behind you, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah, he, is, he is quite adorable. He's just hanging oh, out. Oh, is that <laughs> No. <laughs> Although it does look like Stitch. It's actually from Back to the Outback. It's a Netflix <laughs> movie. Anyway, <laughs> but he's very cute. Um, and I was going to say, I okay, I love Ready or Not, first of all. And I did feel when watching it that it really has that same kind of like seamless diversity of tone that Scream is so infamous for. Um now, Tyler, if you would like to respond to this next question. Uh, I Jenna, will. <laughs> Jenna Ortega has been killing it in like horror lately. I just watched her in a horror movie like last night and I was like, oh my God. So anyway, um, why do you think she has, uh, like, why does her scream have queen material? There you go. Oh man, I don't even know where to start with Jenna. She's like, I, the, I think... We've worked, we, everyone in the cast is so wildly talented, but just singling her out for a second, I think that <laughs> there was this, it was something Mason, Mason would always say about, about Jenna specifically, that she's just built different. There's just something about Jenna that is like, that is just, it's like she was hatched in, a, a, like built in a lab to do what she does so well. And I think what ultimately it is, is it's a, um, it's a real vulnerability and I don't think she's afraid to be really honest and, and show people that, that level of honesty. I think that at the end of the day, you, you have to have that if you're going to feel not only one you're, uh, that you care for the character, but that their peril is really genuine. Mm -hmm. And that for us is um, it's one thing to read a sequence on a page and know like, Oh, the sort of mechanics of it are really interesting. You know, this is what's at stake. And, and there are a couple of sequences without spoiling anything that Jenna gets, you know, gets, gets to be, a, is, is the, the, you know, key ingredient in, mm -hmm. in the movie. And then you see somebody bring the emotional experience of that to life and you go, Oh, right. No, that's what it is. The mechanics mm -hmm. are one thing, how it feels and the level of terror um, is a, is a wholly other thing that you have to communicate and her ability to like turn that on is just, I, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a prodigal talent that mm -hmm. she has and she's, we'll all be working for Jen Ortega someday. <laughs> <laughs> she's so, 
She's so incredible. <laughs> yes, she is fabulous. And I love that this scream kind of um, focuses on family in a way that previous ones have not so much. Uh, so obviously the central dynamic being Jenna and Melissa's characters, why was it so important to make that like, or how did you guys work to make their backstory and their bond believable and compelling work with both the actresses and then also with the rest of the creative team? I mean, that's credit to Guy and Jamie for writing those characters that way. Like they, they wrote a great script that like you're saying it at its heart is just a family drama. And it's about these sisters and their relationship. And when we cast Melissa, I want to say like on a Monday, right. And then we had auditions and this is all over zoom. And then we had auditions for the Tara character that Jenna ended up playing later that week. And, or maybe it was the next week, unimportant, <laughs> but very soon after. And Jenna, when she, when she, her and Sam or her and Melissa were reading they're over zoom and they were, I believe in different countries at the time. Yep. So they this were. is like a, a chemistry read on Zoom. A, a chemistry, the, the least, <laughs> the least friendly way to do a chemistry read. <laughs> you could just feel it through mm. the computer. It was like, oh my God, these, they're, they feel like sisters. Every, I think that everything felt so natural and so real between the two of them. And it's the thing I think that we always look for when we're casting is it's not just the lines, like the lines are good and the lines, the lines are going to do what they need to do but it's the in-between moments. And I think with both of them, that's where like all the sparks were and it just felt so alive and so energetic. And we were all halfway through kind of just texting each other like, oh, sh we have a movie. This is incredible. Mm -hmm. They are both amazing. Yeah. I can't wait for this to go. It's the first time it felt really real. And because at the end of the day for us, and this is our approach to all of our stuff is we want to make sure that that story, like, and in this movie, it's the sister story. It's that's the, should be the takeaway. You know what I mean? Like that's what the movie is about. And then there's all this other fun stuff and all of those things. But if that engine isn't working, then nothing else does. And it all feels kind of superficial. So, I mean, hats off to Melissa and Jenna for, you know, fueling that engine all the way through. Yeah. Absolutely. Now I did a scream marathon in preparation, a screamathon, a stabathon in preparation for five cream. And uh, it's just crazy to me how the movies evolve with like the technology and, you know, the, the fandom culture of their generation or of their time. Like the fourth scream was very much about how we're like living our lives online. It's even more true now than it was then. Yeah. And this one really hits at the fandom aspect. So yeah. it's very meta in that you are creating a story about fans from something that you were a fan of. So now how have the fans responded to you? How do you feel about being integrated into that fandom culture in a much more present way? I mean, I, we're honored. I, 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 the vast, vast majority of fans have been, so kind, I think more kind than we ever anticipated them being, especially given that, you know, the franchise, as you had said, you know, was created so specifically by Kevin and Wes and, and that mm -hmm. they were a part of it uh, all the way through those, those four movies. Um, there was, we've been given just so much, so much love and support. And, and, you know, certainly before the movie started shooting, we felt that support. And now, you know, post, post release, we've had so many people reach out and, mm -hmm. and really share personal stories of how, you know, they were introduced to the Scream movies and how their, their sort of important moments in their lives have, have kind of been built around those experiences and watching those movies and sharing them with other people they love and, and, and the kind of community of family that they have around mm -hmm. those movies. And so now getting to be a part of that, I mean, it's, I feel like we've gained two really significantly amazing families over the course of making this movie. One of them existed on set for us with the cast. And I think that, um, we found a level of closeness and connection with them that I think you only ever dream of, of, of having. And then when you have it, it's just, it's, it's just the most incredible experience. And then of course, you know, outside of the experience of making the movie, the fan, the fan culture and our fan family has been just a really amazing thing to like watch mm -hmm. grow and develop. And um, it's been very kind. And of course there's always a corner of it. That's, that is very critical and that's fine too. You know, I think part of what we hoped the movie is clear in the movie is that we consider ourselves to be a part of, a part of fan culture. We love movies. That's all we talk about is movies. And, and so for as much as we're like taking shots at toxic fandom, 
we also mm-hmm. consider ourselves to be fans and we are opinionated fans. You know, that's, that's sort of, we're in the business of creating, uh, giving, creating things that people can have opinions about. If, if you don't have an opinion about what we've made, then we've failed. We've <laughs> failed you as, as creators. And so we're, we're aware of, uh, very much aware of, of our place in that conversation and, and wanted to just like hold a mirror up to the idea of what movies are and, and how, you know, the things that we, how close we are now to the things that we love, right? There's this real proximity to the people that make things. And we've been the beneficiaries of a lot of kindness because of that proximity. Well, that's wonderful. Speaking of toxic fandoms, I know that there was going to be a Ryan Johnson cameo in the film, right? Which <laughs> tragically could not come yes. to fruition. Uh, but is there any possibility that you could work with Ryan Johnson in some capacity, in some screen capacity in the future? Or is that joke dead now? Would it be too late after this? I don't think anything's dead in screen over, <laughs> is it? I mean, <laughs> that's a joke we'll keep on making until people stop <laughs> laughing at it. <laughs> it's, no, no, yeah, there's a, we'll, we'll, we'd love to. I mean, that was a real, that was a, on a personal level for us. That was a bummer mm. that he mm. could, that we could never work that out because that was going to be really fun. That w- I mean, small knives out, knives out sequel. So you just couldn't. <laughs> we couldn't convince him to fly back from Greece to be in our screen movie. Well, you know, and <laughs> next next time, it just be just open up the Zoom and be like, "We're recording now. This is going in the movie." Yeah. But <laughs> um, anyway, one another classic aspect of the Scream franchise is, of course, the red herring. So whether it's like an incredibly obvious choice or an incredibly absent choice, um, or in this one, an incredibly plentiful, so many potent potential red herrings to choose from. Uh, what would you guys say are hard and fast rules for a good red herring in screen? Um, great question. I'm more than one. I mean, <laughs> I think you want a few, you want a handful, mm-hmm. right? And you want some that feel, I think, and variety. I think, cause you want, you want the ones that feel, and this also, this also goes for the not red herrings for the actual, yeah. you want it, you, you know, it's the whole, everybody's a suspect thing. It's mm-hmm. like, you, you've got to think that everybody is guilty at some point and you got to think that everybody's innocent at some point. Mm. And it's that it's creating those kind of, you know, guardrails so that when you're watching the movie, you, the, for the first time, cause you know, we've talked about it a lot. It, a whodunit is a movie you get to walk once one way and then all the rest of the ways will be different. <laughs> right. And it was really fun for us going back and rewatching the original scream and watching a bunch of whodunits and watching how that's done in all of these great mm-hmm. whodunits and it the tricks are often the same it's like and a lot of the times it's just tell the audience who the killer is they won't believe you and, yeah. and maybe they will for five minutes and then they won't believe you later and we're we all do it and i think in our movie the red herrings thing was fun because there's little moments that you get to play with where you're like yeah let's linger on this character for like a beat too long because people are smart and they know we're showing you that for a reason. And, you know, a- anyone who watches movies on a somewhat regular basis understands that and takes it in. I think one of the things we've talked about is because our, our most obvious red herring in the beginning is the, uh, the Vince. This isn't even a spoiler because it's the entire trailer. <laughs> uh, but, you know, for us, I think it'd be really fun to watch somebody in a few years who didn't see the trailer, who doesn't know anything about the movie watch it where those red herrings that some of us now take for granted because we saw trailers or whatever and really let all of those moments play out to see what's what because i know i find myself when i'm watching whodunits every single thing i i know what that means oh fuck, yeah. i was wrong <laughs> yeah <laughs> there's yes. an investigative like these movies it's so fun the audience to be investi- investigators that's the yeah the fabric it's of what fun who done it is yeah. is it's interactive you're you're it's fun well, your armchair detective the whole time that's like <laughs> that's the fun yeah. of these of these movies definitely well thank you guys <laughs> so much uh this movie was a lot of fun and i cannot wait to follow the new cast into future films and then hopefully you know still see some of the ever dwindling pool of legacy characters. So (laughs) thank you guys. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.